Now I really like my original Shindo 3D Wax DP200 3D printer, but this solid build plate on here is a little troublesome. If you have a big flat surface print like this one, sometimes it's hard to get off and pry off of this flat surface because the surface is not flexible like some of the other printers. Now the 3D Wax 1 model does have a flexible build plate. So you just peel this up, flex the plate, and your print comes off very easily. And that's one of the downsides of the DP200. I wish it had some type of flexible build plate. So I set out to find some ideas as to how I could get a flexible build plate on the DP200 similar to the 3D Wax 1. And what I came up with was this, a flexible magnetic build plate that's installed on a modified 3D Wax DP200 bed. The nice thing was I had an old DP200 bed that I ruined a few years ago laying around. So I took a screwdriver and stuck in and carefully just started prying the blue surface you see there off of the aluminum. And it was almost like a Super 77 adhesive under there. And I did this cold and I just took my hands and kept pushing it up and pushing it up. Now you probably could heat the bed up or use some type of a hair dryer to heat this up and it would come off easier. But I just rolled it for about three to four minutes in my fingers and it came off real clean. I found this Ender 3 magnetic build surface on Amazon for like 13 bucks. And I thought, give it a try. Now the 3D Wax DP200 has a print bed around 200 by 200 millimeters. This was 235 by 235. I figured I could cut it down. Click the link in the description to this video to take you directly to this bed surface on Amazon. Now I'll give you a big caution right now. This is for PLA temperatures only. Right in the description it says do not exceed 70 Celsius with this bed. So you're not going to be printing ABS or anything. This is for PLA only. I want this original bed to lay flat so I'm going to remove these clips. Just take out the four screws and set them aside. Now unfortunately you can't see in the video here, but the one side of this magnetic plate when I pull it off has a 3M logo and an adhesive on it. I previously marked the front of the plate, the one with the tab, where the tab location is. When you rotate these plates on each other um, magnetically 90 degrees, they're stronger one way than another. So just make sure you get them the strongest way and have it marked and know what you're doing. And now I'm just aligning the magnetic plate onto the aluminum plate. I'm going to draw around it with a marker so I know where to cut it. This surface is kind of hard to draw on and see your marks, so just find a marker that works for you. I can see it in here. The camera doesn't show it. And there you can sort of see where I wrote front on there so I knew the orientation of the magnetic plates. Make sure you install a new blade on your hobby knife or utility knife to get a good cut. A good straight edge is very helpful. And then um, if you're going to use a hobby knife or an X-Acto knife like I am, I have the self-healing surface below it, but I pushed pretty hard and went carefully and slow. I had to score it three or four times for it to cut the whole way through, so just be careful with it. There, you see it popped loose, but other ones I had to do three or four times but a good sharp blade is going to help you. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm just trying to get it as close as I can. Notice here's where I mark front. Make sure you didn't cut that off. And I just wanted to check and make sure that these latches would still fit on once the bed surface was put on there. So that looks good. A 
okay I have my front marked here for orientation and on the original bed there's these little cutouts here for the fingers that hold the bed into the plate on the printer so we're gonna have to cut those out on both sheets so just line up here in the correct orientation and get it close because in the end uh, I tried to make these very exact and when you go to uh, melt these two, meld these two um, magnetic plates together, they kind of seek where they want to uh, adhere to each other anyway. So this isn't going to be perfect. Just give yourself enough cutout in the corners. You're not going to be printing there anyway. So just mark them with a marker and cut them out. Okay, now I'm going to take the top print surface that has the Ender logo on it, and again, making sure front is lined up, and I'm just going to put this front edge along here, as close as I can get it. And like I said, it's sort of there's sort of predefined locations where the magnets suck to each other, so as long as front is to front and you can get it lined up pretty close to the edge, just go with it. And I'm going to try to get this lined up and mark the top so I can cut out the top. Now I'm trimming the top magnetic surface, the one that has the Ender logo on it, and just using a sharp utility knife or a sharp hobby knife, score it three or four times, get a nice cut. Now the cuts on my top surface should match the bottom surface. We should be good to go. I'm getting ready to adhere the 3M surface. Make sure you have this right. I had mine upside down. You want to make sure that the aluminum plate um, is set, see, this way, so that these little tabs have the indentations just orient it the way I do and this is going to be the surface we're going to adhere the 3M adhesive to so I'm going to just clean it with some alcohol and a microfiber to make sure there's no fingerprints or oils on there and it'll have a good adhesion. Now I'm going to align the front of mine and stick that part down first. I want the front edge to be nice. Um, it's probably going to then screw up where the notches are in the back. Uh, they're going to fall where they do, but I'd rather have the front surface correct where the tabs are. So I'm just going to peel back about a quarter of this film and crease it. And again, getting it the right way with the notches and the alignment to the front. Make sure that anything I've touched with fingerprints, I'm going to wipe off again. And I'm just going to take and very carefully align the uh, adhesive part up here. And once I get it in this corner aligned, it'll be fine. I'm going to push down that top edge first, try to get it as close as possible. And the problem is if you get this off like I did a little bit, then as you work towards the back, it just keeps getting further and further off. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't perfect. So I start at the center and push down with my finger and then work my way out to either edge. And again, it's only going to adhere to the part that I've peeled the backing back. That's why I do a little at a time. So peel, peel back another quarter of the backing, push your finger in the middle, and then work it to the outside with your fingers. Or I had this J-channel roller here, which seemed to work really well. And I'll just, you just keep doing the same thing, work a little at a time push it to the edges. Hopefully then there won't be any air bubbles or anything. It's not real critical on this, but if you were doing a, you know, 
some type of other surface that had to be perfect. This is probably a good way to do it to keep the air bubbles out. Because you're only doing that little bit in the in the middle and then pushing to the outside where it has room to give. Nothing should get caught under it. Worked pretty damn well. Now I just went over everything. It was a nice flat surface. I was real happy with it. Now just bring in my top surface, clean it with some alcohol, which I'll be touching it again, so I don't know why, but what the heck. And if it gets in the right orientation, it just sucks right down there. Like I said, it's since we lined it up before we marked it and cut it, it'll always go back to that sort of memory location. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Should work out pretty well. And just comparing to the other one, my notches are actually bigger. So we should be okay on that. Now it's really hard to see the thickness here. I wanted to compare. I mean, I guess they're pretty close. Uh, it might be a little thicker, so we'll have to adjust the Z gap on the printer to accommodate that. And I'll just reinstall these latches here on the bottom of the print plate and tighten them down. I usually push them away from the printer when I'm tightening them. That seems to give a tighter, um, there's less play when you put it in the printer. If you push them away, see how my fingers are pushing them away from the plate when I'm tightening them up. Now I installed the new bed plate into the 3D Wax DP200 and I had to go through some trials and tribulations here. I don't know. I I initially my Z offset in the menu was set to 0 0.5 millimeter, I believe. And I thought I you know, it's it, and actually it was really tight. I went to do and I said set it at that and it came up and it actually hit the ender bed. So I moved it way up to like 1.4 from 0 0.5. And it and the the business card test it was pretty good, but then after that I ran a bed uh, um, leveling, and after I adjusted everything, I had to go do the Z offset again, and it was way off. I so I ended up like after I did a bed leveling, I ended up from zero point five to actually zero point four five on the new bed, so it was closer on the new bed. I jiggled around with it for like 15 minutes till I got where I thought the business card felt good and I was getting a good first layer that was adhering. Again, this is PLA only, um, so your mileage may vary. I mean, you're going to have to be careful. Don't embed the nozzle into your bed. Set it a wide gap on the Z to start with and then work your way down. But basically, you know, run the business card so that it's kind of tight in there then do a bed leveling, automatic bed leveling, and then check that Z gap again. And then just kind of use your judgment, print a first layer and pause it and see what you get. And I got it and it turned out pretty well. It's a much floppier and thinner build surface than the 3D Wax 1 build plate. I hope it wouldn't rip in the center there. And also it was very hot at this time. It was about 60, 59. So it's not, it doesn't seem to be as robust of a surface as a 3D Wax 1. But if you're careful with it for 13 bucks, it seems like it's going to work okay. This test part printed a raft, which looked pretty good on the bottom surface and came out okay. And of course the part, you know, it was on the raft, so it's fine. But the bottom surface of the raft itself was pretty smooth and nice. It laid down a nice bead. Here's another test print. I paused it partway through the first layer so I could look at how it laid it down on the bed. 
it just happened to use my 0.5 millimeter extrusion width profile that I was using. I really like the way it prints. Uh, put down a real nice, fat, consistent uh, bead here on that first layer, so I was real happy with that. Yeah, that's pretty nice. And here's one final print removal after letting the bed cool down. Uh, just flex it a little bit, get it under the edge. Seems to stick pretty well, but it pops right off. Now, I don't know how long that's going to, that surface is going to last, but um, right now it's sticking really well and it's making it real convenient. Now, this one happened to print on a raft as well. I forgot to turn it off. I wanted to print straight on the bed, but it do, it will show me on the bottom here, you know, the surface of the raft and everything. So I was real happy with this print. So remember the caution, this is only for PLA. Don't exceed 70 degrees Celsius on this bed. I hope this helps somebody. It's just an idea. Thanks for watching.